Hello everyone, in today's video we're gonna talk about why are you doing AI images the wrong way and how you can improve this so you can get high quality images without a lot of effort. But first we're gonna start from the beginning with the basics and I'm gonna try to go as quick as possible through them to cover them as much as I can so you can have a better understanding how everything works and why it works like this. So this is gonna be one of those 20 minute videos and I know there's a lot of things to be covered so without further ado let's get started so let's see how text to image works let's first enter a prompt a photo of a male warrior and let's press generate what will happen is the AI is going to create an image predefined by our resolution it's going to set a random noise on top of that image and it's going to lock it into a random seed then the AI is going to go through the diffusion process and it's going to produce our final image and if we press generate again the whole same process will happen all over again. So after seeing how text to image works, let's try to create something specific. Let's try to create a concept art for a character. Let's try first using our simple prompt, a photo of a male warrior. If we press generate, this is the results we're gonna get. We've gotten pretty decent results, but nothing from those satisfies the needs of what we're trying to achieve. The first logical thing we will do in a situation like this is to try to change the prompt to much, much more closer what we want to. And in this case, I'm going to change it to a photo of a full body male warrior, since this is the most common thing many users will do in this kind of situation. Now when we press generate, we'll get things that look like this. These results look much better, but I will need to put an important disclaimer here. The images you see are created with my custom model that is fine-tuned specifically for this type of tasks. And if you're using your own custom model or models from the internet, you will not get the same results as me. So to have more closer results, what people will get, we will use the base 1.5 model from Stable Diffusion. And if we press generate, we'll see that the results that we get are far from what we're going after. From all the five images that were created, only one of them is resembling the designs above. And even that one is not even close to what we're going after. In conclusion, Text to image is a great and powerful feature to create and experiment with cool ideas and images, but when you're trying to do a specific design for something and we're trying to achieve a consistency into the design, text to image will not help us at all. So that's why we're going to emphasize specifically on the other really powerful feature from Automatic 11.11's web UI and that's image to image. This method will allow us to achieve much more consistent results and similar appeal and look for all of our designs, no matter how different they are, like the ones that you you're seeing on the screen right now. All right, let's look how image to image works. First, let's use a simple prompt, a photo of a male warrior again. Now let's load our image and then let's predefine our resolution again. The next step is really important. We need to set our denoiser strength. So in my case, I'm going to set it to 0.65. When we press generate, the AI is going to take the image. It's going to add noise on top of it. It's going to set a seed for that noise. And then through the diffusion process is going to create our final image. By using this approach, we can get exactly what we want without having to worry that we need too complicated prompts or anything. So as you can see, for example, we're using a very simple prompt to achieve the exact results that we want. And we're letting the noise and the random seed to add the details and everything else that we want to. And before we're done discussing the image to image technique, there's something that you should take very carefully into consideration when using this process, and that's the denoiser strength. So let's look at those three examples. So as you can see, we're going to use the same image with three different denoiser strength values. So in order for you to better understand how AI actually sees the images that you're provided, depending on the strength that you've set for the denoising strength, I'm going to try to visualize it as close as possible to have a better understanding of what exactly is happening under the hood. So the moment we press generate, it's going to take those values that we've predefined and it's going to sort of blur our image. So the stronger the noise strength we have, the more the blurred result we're going to get. So after this happens, then it's going to go through the diffusion process. And once this is done, it's going to spit out our final images. Or in simple terms, if we use a lower value, for example, 0.45, final result will look similar to our original image that we've used into the generation process. If we use a value of 0.65, we're going to get a good amount of variation. So our result will not look as our original image, but will have a similar feel and look to it. And if you go with a strength value of one, as you can see, on this example is going to drastically change this image. 
Another important thing that I should mention here is that I've provided a lot of examples that you can use in image to image in my Civita model. So this way you don't have to worry about what kind of images you're using into the generation process. But if you're using your own images, the thing that you should take into consideration is that you want to have a lower strand values if your image has too much information into it. So for example, if you have a background or something else happening in the image, you don't want to go with values larger than 0.65. So to emphasize how powerful this technique is, here are five designs done just using the same simple prompt, a photo of a male warrior. And all we can see is that we're having the same consistent pose and different forms and shapes, but the poses and the mood and the feel of all of the images is exactly the same. And this is exactly what I was going after. And last but not least, there's one more thing we need to discuss, and this is the generation process itself. I've seen a lot of images of many users out there and one of the most common things that I've seen that people do is they set their resolution, they press generate, they try to fix some things but most of the time they just release the image like this and probably you've seen many images with messed up hands, eyes, faces and stuff like this but this is something that can be avoided and I'm going to show you how and also I'm going to try to explain you why this is happening while we're going at it. So this is going to be a live demo right now and keep in mind um, this will not be edited. I will try to cover as much as I can but in future videos I'll go much more into depth and why and how those things work. But for now I'm just going to show you the technique so you can use it in your own projects with all the knowledge that you just learned from the things we discussed till now. All right, before we get started, I will quickly show you a few things that you should be aware of. So for example, if you go on Civitai and you open my model, if you scroll down and show more, you can find my templates directory that I've provided for everyone to download. You can find more than 200 images here. So those images will be essential for generation image to image. You can still use your images, but Basically, I've tried to provide everything that you may need, specifically if you're doing character art or things like that. So once we've got this downloaded, we're going to go back to Stable Diffusion. And now I'm going to switch to the PNG info panel and I'm going to show you something powerful, especially for beginners who are just beginning with Stable Diffusion. I've provided a smart template. So if you open, if you download the directory from my Google Drive and you open the smart templates, you will find those images here. Those are just basic templates that I've managed to create so you can use them in image to image or any way you want. So for example, we're going to try to take this one and we're going to drag and drop it here. And this will give us all the prompts and the negative prompts and all the settings that we will need to follow along if you're following along this video. So let's send this to image to image and since we were doing a photo of a male warrior I'm going to leave my backside of my prompts those things just emphasize on improving my quality and things like this on my prompt and I'm going to replace the space marine and we're going to do just a photo of a male warrior so the most common thing that people do is they set the resolution, they press generate and once they're happy with their design, they call it a day. But the problem with just doing this is that if we look at the image, we're working with a 768 by 768 image and what people don't realize is that the noise that's being added is locked to the resolution that you're working on so the way many people try to avoid this is they're going to set crazy resolutions for example they'll set 1560 or something like this and press generate and while well, you can do that if you have a powerful gpu for example like me you can do this but the time this is going to take you is going to be a really long time and for example, even the design that you're doing is something that you may not like. So I would suggest you to do something else. And it's more of a production type of workflow that I've developed for myself. And that's why I'm sharing it with you. So we're going to set back our resolution to 768. 
and we're going to press generate a few times until we find the design that we like. So I'm going to set my C to random since we've imported it from an image. That's why it's locked to this one. So now I want to see something that I like. And for example, let's say that this design is something that we like. Well, how we can add details to this? So for example, you can see that the AI is trying to the noise everything and it's trying to add details here and there but basically it's limited with the amount of resolution that we have so one of the things that i've seen people do is they're going to go to scripts and they're going to use the sd upscale from the scripts and well this is a good workflow and it can help you i'm actually going to show you a smarter and a simpler way you can do this and basically this approach i'm going to use is a similar that you're going to use in a production so we're going to start with the design, then we're going to upscale this design, and after that we're going to refine this design. So I'm going to press generate one more time and see will I get something nice. So let's say we like this and we want to continue evolving this design. The first thing I'm going to do since I don't have enough resolution is I want to upscale this. And before I used to go to Photoshop and do it there, but in time I've learned how to do all those things inside of the web UI of Automatic 11.11. So I'll show you what we're going to do next. First, let's send this to extras. Here, let's go to the scale tab and enter a resolution of 248 of 248. So if we press generate, you'll see that the image will get upscaled. It's still blurry and so on, but that doesn't matter. So usually when I work, I change this to a larger resolution. So for example, 4,096 to 4,096. And I'll tell you in a second why. So this resolution doesn't matter right now. I'm not worried. And you're probably wondering why are we scaling the image to 4K since there is no detail in it. Well, what we're doing right now is we're providing the image with enough pixel data so the AI can add more details to it. But if right now, if we send this back to image to image and try to generate, our GPU will say no, because this is a 4K image and the maximum resolution you can go in image to image is 2K. And how are we going to change that? Well, that's actually the fun part. So the reason we're changing this to 4K is because I want to work on this image in the resolution of 4K. I will replace certain parts of it and Overpaint it in time quickly and going dirty just to demonstrate you the technique. And once I'm done, I'm going to send this back and I'm going to scale it down to 2K simply because I want to oversample the image. This way, all the images that you've seen on my website, uh, on my Civitaya page, are done actually. And we're going to get there, but first, let's move step by step. So once we're happy with this, the first thing I'm going to do is send this back to InPaint. So now, if you've watched previously the first parts of my video, you will know that we've discussed the noise strength and the different values. So for example, if I want to keep this image, but I want to make it much more refined, I'm going to change my denoiser strength to 0 0.45. And now I'm just going to increase my brush size and I'm just going to mask the face, for example. So we're going to start with this part of the face because the face is usually one of the first things that I look into someone. So now what we can do in Automatic 11, 11 Web UI, and this has been in there for a long time, just not many people realized it, is that we can go down and instead of in painting the whole area, we're going to only paint the masked area. So what the AI will do is it's going to try to draw a square around this area. It's going to cut this part of the image. It's going to use this resolution that we've predefined here. So I always work with 768 with 768 because it's faster. And this resolution is also achievable even on lower amount, uh, lower uh, VRAM GPUs. And since we want to refine this, I'm going to use a uh, value of 0 0.45. So let's do a first test and see what we get. If I press generate, it's going to crop this and it's going to try to refine it. And as you can see, 
it's trying to refine it, but the amount of noise is low. So in my case, I want to change drastically the design and actually try a different face and different headwear and stuff like this. So since I'm trying to refine my design by playing with the, no the noise strength, I can achieve different results. But as you can see, we are already getting much more better results and much more sharper looking face. So right now, what the AI does is since we're working in 4K resolution, it's cropping this, it's painting it at the resolution 768 and then brings it back. So since we're working on 4K, I'm going to go a little bit overboard here and change my resolution to 124 to 124. And another thing that's also important and you should take into consideration when changing resolution is that you exponentially need to change the denoising strength as well to reflect the changes in your width and height. So for example, if I make a picture bigger, in order to have more noise on it, I need to change the denoiser strength. So since I've scaled this, I'm going to change my denoiser strength. So now in this 4K image, I'm just going to crop this part of the face and I'm going to generate an image that's 1K inside of this. And once this is done, it's going to downscale this image back to this small square. And basically this will oversample my image. So this is something we're going for. And if you look at this, we're getting much more interesting results right now. And if you're hearing a snorting in the background, please excuse me. That's my French Bulldog Marvin who's sleeping and is having a good time. So let's send this back. And now I will send this back to InPaint and it's just going to replace this part of the image. And now I'm going to do the same thing for hold this area without worrying that anything's gonna happen. So keep in mind by using this technique, if you want less results and less changes happening with those parts of the design, use lower amounts of noise. But as you can see, we're getting some really high quality details over here. So since I'm working with a simple character, it's quite easy to go through all of them like this. Just paint those areas in chunks. And this way you can change different things on your design without having to worry about are you change, drastically changing it or not. So since right now I'm changing it too much, I can interrupt this. I can lower my no noise value to 0 0.6, for example. And if I press generate, it should try to keep whatever's there, but it's going to polish it and add more details to it and try to upscale it in a way. So this way we're cheating the system while by creating a larger image that can store much more data into it. And by using the original way of creating images without worrying that we're burning our GPU. So once this part is done, I'm going to send this back and then I'm going to finish this parts of the shoes and boots for the character. And keep in mind, depending on how big the square you draw or how you draw this mask, this is always going to try to look at the pixel, the edges of each for this pixel and it's going to draw a square around it. So it's going to try to refine and predefine everything there and just gonna generate only this area. So for example, just to show you how powerful this technique is, let's say we want to just paint the belt of the character and let's see how much detail we can get by using this way this method so right now i've just masked the belt and if i press generate it's going to create 1k image it's going to focus only on this part and it's going to try to add as much as possible detail in that area so once i'm done and i'm happy with the results I'm almost done. Actually, last part we need to do is the face. I want to do a little bit more predefined face. And since we're using a lower value, we already have a face there. We just want to refine it a little bit more. So if I press generate, you see that since we have enough pixel data and since we're working only on this part of the image, now Stable Diffusion is able to do a decent face and eyes and all the details that come with it. So for example, you can see the crown is not detailed enough. Well, 
we can send this back to InPaint. And then, for example, if you want to make this more detailed, we're just going to mask this area and press generate. And again, this is just going to crop this part. It's going to try to refine it. And this way we can create really high fine details on our images without having to worry about the resolution or anything like this. So now, once this is finished, don't worry about the other parts that are getting generated. It's basically generating everything that's in the mask area and it's using the mask padding to blur the edges where this is happening. So let's say we're happy with this. Now, what we can do is send this back to extras. I'm going to change my resolution to 248 to 248. And for upscaler, I'm going to use the ESG gun uh, general for v3 so now if i press generate this is going to downscale my image and it's going to over sharpen it so if we open this in a new tab you can see that this way we can achieve really sharp images without having to worry about the details and we can work in larger resolutions without being limited what we need to do this is a very powerful technique and this is how i work and I hope that after this video, you will be able to use my technique in your workflow more or less. And that's it for this video. A uh, few more things and announcements to make. Um, I've created a Discord server, so you can join and hang out with me or ask questions and meet other people who are curious about my workflows and people who do AI. So I'm slowly building a community, so feel free to join. Another thing, I'm trying to evolve my model a little bit by little bit, but I'm always trying to help people, so keep in mind my model is not perfect and anything like this, but I have ways that I'm slowly improving it and actually I'm going to discuss this in another video. Also another thing, in probably the next video we're going to discuss a little bit about prompt altering and things like this and don't forget to subscribe if you're curious how we're going to do that. Also. Thank you for watching and, and I hope you've managed to learn something and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.